we were at real risk because we had this mob trying to come in every door. Uh, and if it were not for what turned out to be obviously a tragic moment when one of our officers shot and killed one of the mob, the space for us to uh, escape wouldn't have been created and we really don't know what the result would have been. Some of you may have seen the grainy footage. I'm no, I'm no videographer, uh, especially in that situation, but some of you may have seen the grainy, grainy footage that I was able to shoot with my cell phone. Um, I, I can hardly watch it because it's so chilling, but you know, I was able to get out, get into an escape tunnel. My staff was able to be sheltered and we're, we're, you know, we've lived to tell this story. And so that's the personal aspect of it. And it's hard for me to divorce the fact that, you know, I personally was at risk with this risk to our country. Here's the problem with this whole thing. We need to have full accountability for everyone who was involved in organizing and executing this attack on our country. That means what we're seeing now, for sure, tracking down, catching, and prosecuting those people who did this terrible thing, those people who entered the Capitol with weapons, with you know, everything they needed to, to kidnap. Um, their intent was to try us for treason and then impose whatever sentence they intended to impose. They were going after Vice President Pence. Uh, you know, you probably saw there was a noose erected outside the Capitol. This wasn't just sort of an out of control demonstration. You don't bring a scaffold and a noose to a march on the Capitol. So where we're focused now is obviously ensuring that that level of accountability is, is provided, that justice is brought to the people who did this. Uh, but there are other forms of accountability that we cannot ignore. And that's the purpose for my return to Washington tomorrow. Uh, Donald Trump bears the greatest responsibility for what took place. There's no arguing that, of course, except for those who are still members of this cult-like following of this deranged, unhinged, and dangerous person. He was reported by those closest to him in the White House as being gleeful at the images he was seeing coming over the television of this attack on the Capitol. And just to be clear, um, some of those around him now who are trying to find a way to separate themselves from him, to distance themselves from both this act and from him, members of his cabinet and other appointed officials who are suddenly resigning as if somehow in the last two weeks of a four-year march to the moment that was almost inevitable, that they can somehow now separate themselves from him, I give them no comfort, and history will not treat them well. My focus immediately, however, is on holding the president accountable. The decent thing for him to do would be to resign the office immediately, and I call upon him to do that. I also call on my Republicans who are now, and I want to be clear about this, some Republicans, because many of my Republican colleagues stood very tall in this last week in standing up to this bully and not going along with the big lie that this entire insurgency is based upon. It's a big lie. It's a falsehood. It's a confection, this notion of a stolen election. It is preposterous. But many of my Republican colleagues joined with Democrats in preserving the, the, the sanctity of our electoral process of the selection of the president. I, I credit them for that. History will treat them well. But those who are suddenly trying to extricate themselves from this, from this situation that they contributed to by pretending to go along with this big lie because they felt that it would benefit them in the short term politically all the time, taking a calculated risk that nothing bad will really happen. History is going to treat them harshly. But for the president himself, I call on 
those responsible members of the Republican Party that may still have some semblance of a relationship with this White House to go down Pennsylvania Avenue. And just as was done in the early 1970s when Richard Nixon faced certain impeachment, tell him that he has lost their faith and he needs to resign the office in order to preserve the country. I don't think they'll do that, but I hope they will, and I don't think he will follow their advice. The other, the other step would be for the cabinet and the vice president to utilize the 25th Amendment to remove him from office, to remove him from the authority of the presidency. That, um, that is a, a tool that was intentionally placed for a situation precisely like this. And I call on Vice President Pence to take that step. Vice President Pence is a good example of the way Donald Trump views the world. He's a sociopath. He used Mike Pence for as long as he could. And when Mike Pence was no longer willing to be subservient and, and, and be his, his sycophant, willing to violate the Constitution, he threw Mike Pence under the bus and has not said a word to or about the person that that mob was intending to capture and kill. Not a word to his own vice president. So I hope that's a moment of awakening for Mr. Pence, who I think is a person with whom I have many disagreements, but has you know, the basic element of decency somewhere within his soul that ought to move him and those cabinet members who have not resigned in order to escape responsibility for taking the 25th Amendment seriously. I give no comfort to Betsy DeVos or Elaine Chao. The courageous thing for them to do is not to quit with two weeks left of this disastrous term. The courageous thing would have been to stay and make sure that the country is protected by utilizing the 25th Amendment. So on tomorrow, Perhaps today, with unanimous consent, unlikely. Tomorrow we will vote to call on the Cabinet and Vice President Pence to use the 25th Amendment and remove Donald Trump from office. If that does not happen, on Wednesday, Donald Trump will be the, second, or the first president in the history of the United States ever to be impeached twice in a single term of office or ever.